parts of the travel industry feeling the effects of the COVID-stricken economy, and that includes airlines. What it could mean for you the next time you travel. And today marks three years since the deadliest mass shooting in U.S. history, the Las Vegas Rampage. Plus, we are connecting the dots about real IDs. 12 at 12 starts right now. 12 minutes, no commercials, and now we are live statewide. So a big shout out to all of our viewers down in Tucson. We're on TV and on the go on the 12 News app, Facebook, and YouTube. Hey guys, it's Trisha here. October is officially here, but that doesn't mean cooler temps are here just yet, darn it. Crystal is here now with your Friday Eve forecast 411. This is overachieving if I ever saw it. We have already locked in 13 record highs so far this year in Flagstaff. Make that 17 in Tucson and a whopping 22 in Phoenix. And we're about to put more notches in our record high belt starting today with a possible record tire in Phoenix. Watching that Mercury closely tomorrow too. We could be resetting records in Tucson over the next couple of days. Camp Birdie, yep. Records are at risk all over the state as temperatures jump up more than 10 degrees above average. Some close calls over in Winslow and Flagstaff too. But then tonight, a photographer's delight and talk about perfect placement of the nearly full harvest moon right here atop the Gilbert Water Tower. Tonight, it will be 100% illuminated and all the weather stars will align for perfect viewing. You're getting a green telescope from northern Arizona straight down to southern Arizona for those clear skies. It will be sweaty though because you're going to have to step out to watch that moon rising right after sundown. Just look to the east. Temperature readings though uh, above average is advertised so it will be a warm one. Then share your photos with us on the 12 News app. You can also do so on our 12 News Weather Watchers Facebook group. Use the hashtag beyond 12 and 12 news. Triple digits, well, they're sticking around right into the first weekend of October for the Valley in Southern Arizona. All those high temperatures start with an eight in the White Mountains in Northern Arizona with a refill on sunshine every day. Praying for a little relief by Halloween. All right, thanks, Crystal. Turning now to the latest COVID-19 numbers from the Arizona Department of Health Services. The state is now reporting an additional 705 cases and sadly, an additional 24 deaths reported today. That means more than 5,600 people here in Arizona have died from COVID-19 complications since the start of the pandemic. Happening today, Scottsdale Corridor will partner with the nonprofit Vitalant to host a blood drive. Everyone who donates can also get a free COVID-19 antibody test. This event started at 10 o'clock this morning and it's going to continue until 3 this afternoon, so you still have a few hours. Organizers say it's best to sign up on the Scottsdale Corridor website before you head on down. And of course, masks are required. The latest unemployment report shows nearly 840,000 people have filed for first time benefits. That's about what we've been seeing in recent weeks, but keep in mind that's nearly seven times higher than it was before the pandemic hit. Another big indicator of our nation's economic recovery will come tomorrow. That's when the monthly jobs report is going to be released. Two major airlines are threatening to furlough tens of thousands of employees starting today. This comes as talks in Congress about another federal aid package are at a standstill. Team 12's Matt Uris is joining us now with more on the impact that that could have right here in Arizona. The two airlines we're talking about here are United and American, and they're threatening more than 30,000 jobs if Congress doesn't act soon. Airfare, of course, has been hit particularly hard by the pandemic with travel down 70 percent. That's left many airlines in a financial bind. They got help back in March, receiving $25 billion in federal stimulus money in exchange for not cutting any employees through September. Airline executives say they'll keep paying their workers if Congress will approve an extra $25 billion in grants. Right now, lawmakers are still negotiating a deal with talks expected to continue today. But really encouraged by the fact it sounds like they're making real progress. That is absolutely the right path um, for, for airlines and I think actually for our country. Beyond American and United, smaller airlines are threatening jobs as well. By the way, United and American both have hubs here at Sky Harbor, so it could mean job losses in our community. In Phoenix, Matt Uris, 12 News. Mm.
All right, thank you, Matt. Today marks the third anniversary of the deadliest mass shooting in modern U.S. history, the Las Vegas Rampage. Authorities say Stephen Paddock shot and killed 58 people and injured nearly 700 others. The 64-year-old fired from the 32nd floor of the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino onto a crowd of concert goers. According to witnesses, the shooting lasted nearly 15 minutes. We remember it all. By the time authorities finally got inside Paddock's hotel room, he was dead. Police believe Paddock took his own life and no one else was involved with the shooting. Wednesday, a judge approved an $800 million class action settlement. It will be divided among more than 4,000 victims. Former President Jimmy Carter is celebrating today. Carter is turning 96 years old, making him the longest living U.S. president. His spokesperson told the Atlanta Journal Constitution Carter and his wife plan to spend his birthday at their home in Plains, Georgia. Wow, what a life. But well wishes can be left on the Carter Center's website. Happy birthday. And while we're talking about former presidents, President Barack Obama, former President Barack Obama, that has made a special surprise virtual appearance during game one of the NBA Finals. Listen to this. Due to the ongoing coronavirus pandemic, there have been no supporters at games inside the NBA bubble, but fans have been invited by the league to watch the games at home and to have their reactions streamed in real time in the Orlando venues. So last night, Obama appeared in the virtual crowd as the Los Angeles Lakers dominated the Miami Heat. Obama thanked poll workers participating in the upcoming elections. It's time to connect the dots where we take a deeper dive into the headlines. Have you gotten your real ID yet? Well, if not, uh, good news. You still have a little time to do so. Today was supposed to be the deadline to have it done, but the countdown clock has been reset. So why did it happen and what's the new deadline? Team 12's Rachel McNeil helps us connect the dots. Today, October 1st, 2020, was the original deadline to have your real ID. But like a lot of other things, the COVID-19 pandemic pushed back that date. Quarantine, not exactly making it easy to go out and get one. In March, the acting director of Homeland Security announced the department would delay the deadline one full year to October 1st, 2021. Procrastinators rejoice. So what's the deal with these IDs anyway? Well, it's the final phase of the Real ID Act of 2005. It was passed after the September 11th terrorist attack and requires all Americans to have a compliant ID to board a domestic flight. What that means is if you don't have a gold star in the upper right hand corner of your ID this time next year, you may not be allowed to board a flight. So don't forget, you need to have your real ID by October 1st, 2021. And that's Connecting the Dots. If you're looking to get your real ID soon, the MVD is now open, but due to COVID, you're going to need to make an appointment. That's a big hint there. It helps a lot. You're also going to need to bring proof of identity, proof of social security, your social security number, that is, and two different documents proving Arizona residency. Hashtag most clicked. Here are the stories piquing everyone's interest right now. Oregon firefighters now have the force on their side. Listen to this. Thanks to a young Star Wars fan, a five-year-old sent a baby Yoda doll in a care package to firefighters. And this was all part of a donation drive. How sweet is this? He also sent a note that read, here's a friend for you in case you get lonely. The responders absolutely loved it. Who wouldn't? The doll's travels are documented in a Facebook group and it's called Baby Yoda Fights Fires. I love that. Well, Chrissy Teigen and John Legend are mourning the loss of their third child. The model and TV personality was hospitalized in Los Angeles Sunday after revealing she's been on bed rest and bleeding for weeks. On her verified social media account, she said the bleeding wouldn't stop despite several blood transfusions. Teigen also revealed they had already begun calling the baby Jack. She wrote, to our Jack, I'm sorry that the first few moments of your life were met with so many complications that we couldn't give you the home you needed to survive. Legend also tweeted, we love you, Jack. They're back in black and reunited for the newest album in six years. ACDC, oh, I love this group. The Hall of Fame rock band tweeting they're going to be releasing Power Up, their first recording with the rest of the living original band members 
singer Brian Johnson, drummer Phil Rudd, and bassist Cliff Williams. They're all heading back to the studio with guitarist Angus Young. But when the new music will be released is still up in the air. I can listen to it now, running down the mountain. As the pandemic continues to plug the U.S., unfortunately, COVID-19 has made the hunger crisis here in the Valley even more prevalent. The Phoenix, the Phoenix Rescue Mission, that is, is seeing an increase in people across the state struggling to make ends meet. But they're definitely helping out with the holidays just around the corner. They're concerned, though. So the mission is kicking off its holiday campaign today and hoping three months is enough time to gather enough donations to cover the need. Um, there's a lot of people who have been really fortunate to not be impacted by COVID as, as heavily. And so this is a really great opportunity for people to express their gratitude and help other people in the season. You can donate online, of course, or drop off food or other items directly to the Phoenix Rescue Mission. You can see a list of items needed right now, including canned foods and cleaning supplies. Check it out. Time now for the look ahead. The stories are going to be talking about a little bit later on today. Controversy on the soccer pitch. What a Phoenix Rising player is accused of saying to a San Diego player that prompted the entire opposing team to walk off the field in protest. Plus, with less than five weeks until Election Day, we're putting the process to the test. What a group of TV stations across the nation found when trying a simulation of mail-in voting. And that's your 12 at 12, the facts on everything you need to know in just 12 minutes, no commercials. We're always on anywhere, anytime on 12news.com, the 12 News app, and our socials as well. We'll see you again soon. Love that shot.